Sam Harris is just about, I mean, he is one of the only guys I've seen who's like, no, I'm going to sit here and try and intellectualize the idea that genocide is fine, the idea that blowing up babies is fine, the idea that, that murdering 40,000 innocent people is fine. I'm going to sit here and tell you why it's rational, it's logical, it's sophisticated. He is such an amazing piece of garbage, amazing piece of just sad, sad human sack of shit. So here's Sam Harris from his podcast again. Israel has made some terrible mistakes in Gaza. Yeah. All of it. If his podcast began and ended with that, I would have agreed. <laughs> that's, that's his whole podcast. Two to one sentence. The recent killing of aid workers is the latest example. He does it. Sorry, I know it's going to be a lot of interrupting, but otherwise, if I let him get a full sentence out, I'd be debunking that for 25 minutes alone. So when he says killing of aid workers, he's talking about the world kitchen that was where they murdered all those aid workers in the world kitchen cars or whatever it was called, world something kitchen. He doesn't mention that that was not an accident that was three vehicles targeted with world kitchen whatever the name of it is plastered on the top of each car so that it could be seen by planes and drones and anything else that might be above them and they had been coordinating with israel's army the idf they had been coordinating with the idf to make sure they got permission to travel anywhere so, in fact, they called up and said, hey, is it okay if we travel here in Gaza? And they go, oh, yeah, that's fine. And then they murdered them. They first sent a missile into the first car. The survivors got out, got into the second car. They sent a missile into the second car. The survivors got out, got into a third car. They sent a missile into the third car. And then they were all dead. Job done. So Sam Harris forgets to mention that this was a coordinated attack, not an accident. But this is the kind of thing that happens in every war. No, it's actually not. <laughs> It's so not the type of thing that happens in every war. Yes, there are collateral damage in every war. That part is true. But if you look at the targeting of world kitchen workers, like one car after another, actually not happening in other world wars. If you look at the actual percentage of children being murdered, uh, 43, 45% of all the murders by Israel have been children. Actually, not done in other modern warfare. In other modern war warfare, the number of children murdered is like four to eight percent. Eight is on the on the high side where it's like those maniacs aren't at all trying to avoid children. Whereas 43, 45 percent is gunning for children. And what Sam Harris also does not want to tell you is that these snipers are aiming for children. There are children coming into the morgue with double shots in their head meaning it's not an accident. And in a sniper scope, you can tell that it's a child. It's not tough to figure that out with a sniper scope. And they are shooting them twice in the head. They also, oh God, really debunking him. I got to make sure this segment doesn't end up 45 minutes long. Also, he's not mentioning that we have seen extensive coverage on the AI system that Israel is using to target people in Gaza, to target what they say are Hamas. Now, many of the ones they're targeting are not Hamas, but let's put that aside for a second. When they find someone they believe is Hamas, because the guy owns three cell phones, which could be a journalist, could be a lot of things, but whatever, that means must be Hamas. They don't just kill that person when they find them. They wait for that person to walk into their home, and then they bomb the whole home to intentionally kill the family intentionally. They watch the guy walk into the home. While he's walking into the home, they could bomb him, but they wait till he gets inside his house or apartment. Then they bomb him because then they can kill the whole family. And obviously in the living conditions in Gaza, you often have many generations living together. So it's kind of like, let's obliterate the guy, obliterate his kids, obliterate his cousins, obliterate his uncles, his aunts, his grandmother, his mother. Let's kill them all because then we don't have that entire family. And, and you know, this is called something. It's called uh, genocide. That's I was, It slipped my mind for a minute there, but that, that's what it is, yeah. Look up the definition of genocide. Dictionary de definition. So let's go back to Sam Harris saying this happens in all wars. There are always friendly fire incidents where the good guys wind up killing their own soldiers. Which is not what we were talking about. We were talking about, he, was, he brought up killing of aid workers, which is not your own soldiers. And these aid workers actually got permission to drive where they were driving. Everything he's saying is just utter, utter horseshit, utter garbage. But the key here is he says it in a nice, smooth voice. 
So it's fine. It's fine. You you endorse and celebrate and 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 defend genocide, but you say it in such a way that it sounds like you're talking about your favorite jazz trio. Then it's cool. It's good. Way to go, Sam Harris. To say nothing of innocent non-combatants, every conflict the U.S. has been in has produced horrors of this kind. That is true. And rather than say, so that makes it fine. Instead, he should go, oh. So if Israel is uh, committing a genocide right now and the U.S. does this too, maybe the U.S. is awful too. What? Oh, Sam, would you have to use two brain cells to figure that out? Two whole brain cells? But of course, he's also ignoring the fact that and the, the U.S. empire's wars, uh, killing six million over the course of, uh, of 20 years with the global war on terror, uh, the, the estimates, according to the Brown University cost of war, are 4.5 to 6 million uh, people murdered in these areas. Now, that's taking into account indirect deaths. So when you blow up a water facility and people die of diseases because they don't clean water, that counts. But if you look at just direct deaths, it's about 1 million where literally just bomb landing on guy's head. Rather than Sam Harris use that as a legitimacy for Oh, the U.S. does it, so it's okay for Israel to do it. It should be the reverse. It should be Israel's horrific. The U.S. does it. The U.S. is also horrific. See how he spun those on their head? But he says it like it's, you know, we look, guys, we're always bombing kids. We're blowing up weddings. It's cool, man. We bombed weddings and funerals. See, now, if you take that clip and you make that his entire podcast, again, I would agree. <laughs> Just welcome to Sam Harris Hour. We bombed weddings and funerals. Goodbye, everybody. Then I would totally agree. In Iraq and Afghanistan. Remember Pat Tillman? We killed our own celebrity football player. <laughs> this, is, this is so stupid. This is like a Mad Libs. Could you, like, is there anyone in the house in the world right now who's like, looks at Israel killing 40,000 people. Those are direct deaths, not the indirect deaths, which are over 200,000. Because Does anyone else in the world right now? I mean, maybe some IDF generals, but... Is anyone else in the world right now looking at 40,000 people dead, 70% of them women and children? They see that and they go, yeah, but we shot Pat Tillman. So it's kind of it's the same, right? It's kind of the same, right? Because, yeah, Israel killed the, the 30,000 children, but our guy shot Pat Tillman. So... I mean, what it's it's very, it's very sim, same same thing. It's like, it's like you know. And Pat Tillman was like a really cool guy, so it's like he's like thirty thousand people. No one but the bad guys amounts to an act of spectacular self harm, especially for Israel, which is held up to greater scrutiny and to higher standards than any other nation. That's one of the dumbest sentences I think I've ever heard in my life. Israel's had to more scrutiny than any nation. Israel has done massive propaganda efforts to actually make sure they're not held to the same scrutiny of other nations. You're telling me if other nations, if, if, if African nations, if Latin American nations were murdering 40,000 fucking people, 70% women and children, they wouldn't be held to scrutiny? Israel has, has, until this point, has been held to almost zero scrutiny. In the Great March of Return, what was that, 2018? In the Great March of Return, you had thousands of unarmed Gazans walking up to the border fence and many of them getting shot. Israel killed well over 100 people. They shot like 1,000 people with snipers shooting women, children, people holding white flags, medics, press, with snipers shooting them. And that wasn't even during this so-called war. It's not a war, it's genocide, but during this so-called war, that was during people marching towards a border fence. Israel murdered all those people and was held to pretty little scrutiny. Ah, uh, he is un unbelievable. And under conditions that are objectively more challenging than any other nation has ever faced. <laughs> Okay, let's ignore the idea that n nobody's ever faced a challenge except Israel is another dumb statement. But yeah, Israel is in a challenging position right now. God, that I totally agree with him on that. They are in a challenging position. Let's analyze maybe why, maybe why that is. Is it because they're a apartheid state? Is it because they're committing genocide right now? Is it because they 
stole all their land not that long ago. Really difficult circumstances. It's because they're a fucking apart oppressive apartheid thing. It's because they came in in the 19 late 40s, 50s, stole everyone's land. The first Nakba was a, 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 a mass ethnic cleansing. Killing of many, say, 700,000, the estimates. It's tough to know with records those times, but it was hundreds of thousands. They steal the land. They continue to steal the land. They're voted into existence by the UN with a vote of 33 nations. 33 nations, many of them who were browbeat and pressured by the United States uh, and other countries. But 33 nations out of the 200 in the world voted them into existence because at that time the UN only had something like 52. All of this is why Israel has a tough time. That's why Israel's having a tough time right now is because they're a brutal apartheid state. Now hopefully Israel is busy learning whatever lessons it can learn to make fewer tragic mistakes. Like don't genocide, you mean that lesson? But none of its mistakes, however terrible, suggests that Israel is on the wrong side of this conflict. What? <laughs> Everything suggests it's on the wrong side of the conflict. There is nothing that doesn't suggest it's not on the wrong side. Holy God. It honestly, this is equivalent to this is equivalent to during World War II being like, sure, there's the Holocaust. Sure, things are rough for Germany, but nothing suggests that they're on the wrong side, that the Nazis are on the wrong side of this conflict. Yeah. It actually does. It all very much does. Or that they should stop fighting before destroying Hamas. First of all, even generals, even many in Israel's military say destroying Hamas is not even possible. Uh, but on top of that, we know Israel not just destroying Hamas. They created Hamas. They helped fund Hamas. Uh, they knew about October 7th for a year in advance, according to the New York motherfucking Times. Everyone knows they knew about October 7th, and yet they let it happen anyway. So they're not actually trying to stop Hamas. They're trying to genocide everyone in Gaza. That's their aim. And part of blowing up all the hospitals was to try and make disease run rampant through Gaza. And then they could claim it wasn't them killing all the people. Well, guess what's now running rampant in Gaza? Polio. Polio is now in Gaza as well. They're fighting an urban war against a terrorist regime that is doing everything within its power to maximize the loss of civilian life. <laughs> no, that's not true at all. Okay, so first of all, if you call Hamas a terrorist re regime, you have to, of course, call Israel a terrorist regime, right? Hamas, on October 7th, came in, kidnapped hundreds of people, and shot many people, although many of the 1,200 that were murdered were murdered by the IDF. That's nothing compared to what Israel does. So Israel's absolutely a terrorist organization. And let me just remind everyone that prior to October 7th, before October 7th, Israel had 5,000 5, Palestinian hostages in prisons. So Israel was the one holding all the hostages before October 7th. Now, since October 7th, they've stolen, kidnapped another, you know, numbers are tough to get come by, but probably 5,000 people. So they now have like 10,000 hostages in Israeli prison. It's interesting. Sam Harris has no interest in freeing those hostages. I wonder why that is. And he says all this bullshit about, oh, they're trying to maximize civilian death. No, they're not. They created tunnels because it was the only way to operate uh, unsurveilled in an open air prison. All of this comes back. He wants he wants you to have like a goldfish memory and you think that Gaza just popped up out of the blue yesterday and Israel just, all of this history started yesterday. No, in fact, these are people put into a prison. Yes, an open air prison, but it's still a prison. They can't, they can't leave or come in or out. They, they can't get medical supplies. They can't often get the food they want. They can't get construction supplies so they can rebuild their buildings, uh, et cetera, et cetera, technology, et cetera. So they're prisoners. And yeah, they found ways to operate. They found out that if they created tunnels, guess what? They couldn't be surveilled as easily by Israel. If any of us were prisoners, is that not what we would do? Are there any of you, please, please raise your hand if you're out there. And if you were a prisoner locked in a few square mile area, you wouldn't find the way to live that was outside of the view of your captors. It's, it's so stupid. Okay, the lengths to which Hamas has gone 
to ensure civilian casualties is unprecedented. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because you know what Hamas did is they're actually the ones that programmed the AI program. Uh, I believe it's called Lavender. Lavender. Uh, I believe it's called Lavender. They, they're actually the ones that program the AI system that Israel uses to uh, blow up whole families. Yeah, that's, that was Hamas. Yeah, Hamas, it, it, you know, they, they totally, uh, they set the coordinates that got Israel to blow up all the hospitals. Uh, besides the fact that we've never actually seen any control rooms underneath hospitals, right? We were all going to see these amazing, amazing uh, Hamas control rooms under all the hospitals and everything. Boy, it's interesting. We haven't seen any of that. We haven't. Yeah. The most they could come up with was like when CNN got a camera in there, they showed a, a, a calendar written in Arabic on the wall. That certainly shows that's a control center, a command center in the hospital. Linger over this detail for a second. This gets my vote for the most perverse behavior in human history. Uh, I think Sam Harris gets my vote for the most perverse mental gymnastics in human history. What a disgusting human being. What a, like the ability to the ability to do these like to act like this faux intellectual I'm going to somehow make it logical to commit genocide. I'm going to make it rational to commit genocide. Like, and he's honestly trying harder to justify it than the Israelis are, than like Netanyahu and the generals. Because they say things like, oh, they're all termites, kill them all. They say things like, uh, no babies are innocent. You know, they, they no Palestinians innocent, even the babies. They say things like, "It's we just want to clear Gaza. Like, that's, they're not, doing a lot of the mental gymnastics. Sam Harris is just about, I mean, he is one of the only guys I've seen who's like, no, I'm going to sit here and try and intellectualize the idea that genocide is fine, the idea that blowing up babies is fine, the idea that, that murdering 40,000 innocent people is fine. I'm going to sit here and tell you why it's rational, it's logical, it's sophisticated, it's evolved. It's mature. It's the adult thing to do is just murder thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Real mature, real adult, real intellectual, this guy. I mean, it, it's it's funny because he's he's like got that kind of book smart speak, but he's clearly got like a really base animal brain, like a like a the 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 ape on the savannah that was like the the slower ape. They kind of, you know, the other apes were like, just leave, just leave him, just leave him over by the tree. He doesn't, I know he doesn't get it. Just, just move on. It's just like a real troglodyte, basic level animalistic lizard brain, but he has a good vocabulary. <laughs> it's good to know that people with uh, good vocabulary can be lunatics or sociopaths and the college students and the TikTok zombies can't see the asymmetry here. Now, many people across this world right now are talking about the asymmetry going on in the Gaza-Israel conflict. These are people who are not, probably not calling, many are not calling it a genocide, not calling it ethnic cleansing, but they're saying, but it is a, it is asymmetrical. Like Israel's killing too many people. That's what they say. It's, it's, a, it's asymmetrical warfare. It's not really fair. Sam Harris is so unhinged He's saying it's asymmet asymmetrical the other way. He's saying it's asymmetry because Hamas has such an upper hand that Israel's just doing the best they can. They just they're trying so hard. They're trying so hard to do the best they can. Here, let's see. Let me we'll get uh, Sam Harris's take on on this, and maybe I'll wrap up with this. Let's get Sam Harris's take, you know, because Israel is so, they're so ethical and they're trying so hard and they really want to protect people. The government of Israel was debating whether it was okay to rape Palestinians. This is not a joke. This is the Knesset and part of their, part of the proceedings were shown on video and they were debating whether it's okay to insert a stick in a prisoner's, whether that's legitimate, debating whether it's okay to Palestinians. That's what's going on in the Israeli government right now. That's how far, how morally repulsive they've gotten. And I'm sure Sam Harris will have a good defense of that. It's just so morally repulsive. I mean, it is. It, Sam Harris is trying to get you to believe in an upside down moral universe, an absolutely inverted moral universe. And it is unbelievably repulsive. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, he is 
well, one of the things he got known for was uh, defending atheism, talking about atheism. And one of the things that's uh, put forward as a debate against atheists, and and I'm I'm atheist. I'm a secular secular Jew, so I I call it uh, atheist by choice, to Jewish by choice, Jewish by birth. But one of the things that's used to attack atheists is, oh well, without a in atheism, there's no morality because God isn't telling you what to do, right? Uh, with atheism, you could just murder someone because God wouldn't say that's bad. Or whatever. And it's a dumb argument. It's really, it's really stupid. You should get, if the only reason you're not murdering someone is because uh, a guy in the sky in a, or a book you read told you not to, then that's, that's a real problematic. Like you should have, you should have a deeper, deeper moral understanding rather than just, uh, you know, you might go to a fiery place down below one day. So it's a dumb argument. But ironically, Sam Harris right here has proven it right. He's an atheist, and clearly he has zero morality. <laughs> like, zero ethics. Zero understanding of human worth to defend a genocide. So he really is not making atheists look good right now. And, you know, I I, I do not like to see it, but he's uh, he's really hurting the atheist cause. If you want my other destroys videos, I've been doing these on various people who are out of their minds. Uh, you can go to leecamp.com slash destroys.